Well, good morning, friends. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Here we are, April 19th, uh, the Sunday after Easter, and it is a blessing to be in this space to celebrate the movement of Christ in our lives and in our hearts. Last week, we had a wonderful Easter celebration. I hope all of you were able to enjoy um, remembering that the tomb was empty and that Christ is risen. And this morning, we're going to continue on our journey of Easter. Easter really is a season. It isn't just limited to one Sunday out of the year, but we celebrate it in some regard. Every Sunday is a little Easter, but we are in a season uh, what a lot of folks call Easter Tide. And I just want to welcome everybody who is joining us this morning for worship. My name is Reverend Jeff Prothrow. I serve as pastor at DeSoto United Methodist Church. And I'm here with our coordinator of children, youth, and family, Sabrina Wellman, who will be offering a children's message during our reading of scripture. And every Sunday at 9 a.m., she offers a Sunday school, and it is a blessing for uh, us to be able to do that. And it's still up on our Facebook page, and so you can also take a few moments to look at Sunday school following worship if you would like. A um, couple of announcements. First, in our Facebook feed, uh, right before worship, we were able to upload a couple of hymns, including one that we've recorded using um, our space, our sanctuary. Marilyn Lehman came in and recorded some hymns, and today we uploaded He Lives, very appropriate for the week after Easter, and it has the lyrics, and so you're invited to look at that and sing along. And we have a couple of other songs to ho helpfully prepare our hearts for worship as well. This is for DeSoto folks, uh, United Methodist Church folks. We do have an Ad Council meeting following worship next week at 1130. Uh, just email Pastor Jeff at DeSotoUMC.org if you want to participate in that, and that would be really nice. And tonight at 5 o'clock is our, um, it's game night for our youth group, for the Zoom youth group. And so if you have a youth in middle or high school, you can email Sabrina at youthfamily at desotoumc.org and she will send you to the link to join in that game night. Uh, and it certainly is a blessing to be able to do that. Also, um, on Wednesdays at noontime, we have a time of prayer and devotion that I lead, and it is a special time in, in the life of the church as we just pause and take a moment to reflect and pray uh, during the middle of the week. And coming up here in a couple of weeks, we are developing some Zoom interviews that we will have for Facebook in which we talk about some issues that are kind of weighing on our hearts. One will be an interview with um, therapist Tammy McKinsky as we talk about mental health issues. Another will be with um, Tammy Holwick and she'll talk about the work of Safe Home, the domestic violence shelter of Johnson County. And we're also lining up some other interviews that we will have uh, in the weeks ahead. So be on the lookout for that. Well, blessings to all of you. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. It is wonderful to be in this time of worship together. And we're starting off a sermon series for the next several weeks called A Good Enough Faith. I know as we remain cloistered in our homes, some of us may be wondering if what we are doing is good enough. I think of that as a parent as I try to help my children um, with their schoolwork. I'm having to relearn a lot of stuff and I'm certainly appreciative of all the teachers who have um, been able to provide their resources and give so much to the parents so that we can help our children with their education. But I certainly sometimes wonder, boy, am I doing what's good enough? And that also has bled over into my faith life. Am I leading a good enough faith? As we get on the other side of Easter, as we live into the promise of resurrection, what does our faith look like in this moment? And here are some words from uh, retired pastor Glenn Rainsley. He writes that we are now in the season called Easter Tide. Perhaps it is a fitting time to consider that our resurrection faith has tidal qualities. It breaks upon us as waters upon the shore, molding and shaping. 
Sometimes it smooths our rough and jagged edges, and at other times it pulls us at us to expose new sharpness. It uncovers what has previously been hidden. Faith brings surprises, laying them before us as though they were dropped by an outgoing tide. Its offerings connect us with people in far-off places. Its gifts include living things such as hope and charity. Faith tells us of God's power and grace, both ever in motion as the seas, both ever present whether we are at high or low points in our lives. Faith constantly beckons. It seems to stretch toward us as the waters of a new broken wave reach out to the walker on the shore. In gathering together during this season, we open ourselves to a God who changes us, surprises us, informs us, draws us. And may our worship during this season, and may this community, though we are staying in our safe spaces, be filled with the Spirit. Let us continue this time of worship with a call to worship together. And as we did last week, I will simply offer uh, some words and raise my hands. And in response, as I raise my hands, all you need to say where you are is Christ is alive. Christ is alive. So let us continue this time with our call to worship. God has made this day. Christ is alive. Praise God who works through the Spirit to empower the church. Christ is alive. We praise the God who raised Jesus from the dead and raises us to new life daily. Christ is alive. And by faith, we continue together on this Easter journey. Christ is alive. Again, that was one of the hymns that I uploaded. Christ is alive. And so I hope you're able to spend some time singing and reflecting and listening to those words. It's wonderful music to our ears. And it's a wonderful reflection of our faith story. Well, as we enter into this time of prayer together this time in which we are able to lift up to God everything that is in our hearts and our minds. I know that some of us carry with us a lot during this time as we think about loved ones, as we think about how we can care for others, and how we can be cared for in this moment. This is an invitation to pour out all that you have before God. It is by faith that we pray, that we lift up uh, those names in our hearts, those situations that sometimes seem unbearable, and those moments in which we do want to just offer our praise and thanksgiving. Sometimes it's big things, sometimes it's small things, but it is through prayer that we remain connected as a community together. And so I just want to offer a few moments of quiet as we center ourselves and as you lift up in prayer all that you need to lift up, let us be in this moment of prayer. Each week I do receive emails at Pastor Jeff at DeSotoUMC.org and phone calls regarding folks who would like to have uh, people lifted up in prayer. You are also welcome to offer names or situations or anything that you'd like in our comments section for the wider community to lift up in prayer. This week I, read, I um, received some specific prayer requests including colleague here in the Kansas City District, Reverend Shelley McNaughton Lawrence, who lost her mom this past week uh, to COVID-19. She had been undergoing cancer treatments and um, caught COVID-19 and now is uh, transitioned from life to the life eternal. So we want to be in prayer for Shelley and Shelley's family 
during this time. Also continued prayers for Trudy Little, as uh, that is Matt Little's mother, as she continues and begins her journey of treatment for cancer. And we just want to offer our blessing to Trudy and Kent up in Omaha and continued blessings for the family. And Hank and Amanda Bernard have asked for prayers. Amanda works with a lot of families in the area and is encountering many different situations that have been difficult during this time of quarantine. And she wants to lift up her friend Angie, whose mother is in uh, Springfield, Missouri, and has uh, gone to the hospital with COVID-19 as well. And so we want to be in prayer for all of them. And continued prayers for all our healthcare workers, our first responders, our grocery workers, all those persons who um, out of necessity are interacting with other people so that basic needs can be met. Please be in prayer for them during this time. Continued prayers for our leadership as we seek the best way to navigate the troubled waters that we are encountering. And we just ask that we can find a certain unity so that we can move forward together and that all the scientists and doctors and leaders of um, our communities, our counties, our states, and the country can move forward in a way in which the risk to people's lives are lessened and that we can all experience the fullness of what uh, this country can give to one another. And so let us be in prayer for that as well. I know many of you right now are lifting up your own prayers, and I just want to also continue to lift up prayers for our faith community, for anyone who's joining us who haven't been a part of DeSoto United Methodist Church, for the wider faith community, and for this church in particular as well during this time as we seek ways to remain faithful in our mission and ministry here for the DeSoto community. Let us go to God together with our prayers together. Holy God, this morning we gather together in our safe spaces. We gather together in our pajamas, with our coffee mugs, with our uh, family, and perhaps some of us are just gathering by ourselves, wanting to experience the fullness of your grace in worship. We know that for some of us, um, our journeys has been one that has filled us with questioning our faith, questioning if whether what we are doing is the right path to take so that our discipleship can continue to grow. Please give us the assurance that as long as we are journeying with you, we as a community will continue to be strengthened. We know there are many folks right now who are experiencing the uncertainty of what the days ahead will bring. There are many people who are caring for others who need to be strengthened for this journey ahead. We've lifted up names this morning, but we know there are many nameless folks out there who are needing to receive the fullness of your healing grace. And we just ask that by our faith that those folks can experience the graciousness of your love, that we are all of sacred worth, and that through the work of Jesus Christ, who conquered death and demonstrated the fullness of new life through the power of resurrection, that that power can sustain us as we move forward together. And we pray all of this in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I will turn you over to our coordinator of children, youth, and families, Sabrina Wellman, as she offers this children's message. Good morning, friends. I am glad you are here with us in worship on Facebook Live this morning. Before I begin my children's moment with all of you, I want to say thank you. 
Thank you to our essential workers, the people that are continuing to work to help all of us during this time of COVID-19. And I also want to say thank you to all of you who are doing your job to stay home and help us, even though it's so hard to stay away from our friends, thank you for doing what you're supposed to do to help us flatten the curve. Thank you. Well, this morning, our scripture comes from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews is in the New Testament. And I want to share a little information with you about the book of Hebrews and specifically the chapter that we're going to look at, Hebrews chapter 11. This chapter contains what is sometimes called the Bible's Hall of Faith. It reminds us about the stories of Old Testament people who trusted God and did amazing things with God's help. So our scripture today is very short, so don't blink, you might miss it. Are you ready? It's just one verse, and it's from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And that's Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith. That's what we're talking about this morning. That is a hard word. It's an abstract word. It's, it's more of a verb, an action word, than a noun. And it's not something that we just think. It is the way we live. Faith has a lot to do with trust. For example, if you trust that your parent or your swim teacher is going to catch you when you're going to jump into the swimming pool, then you will jump because you know that you're going to be safe. And when we trust God, we follow God's rules. Having faith or if we make it an action word, faithing that God is in charge and is working out things for good in the world. You know, I mentioned that this chapter that I read is sometimes called the Hall of Faith. And so I invite you to keep reading chapter 11 to hear about these um, great ancestors in our faith. As I continue here, I want to share with you one of the God's thoughts, my thoughts, from the Bible that we give to our third graders. Here's what it says. Although we can't see God, much like we can't see electricity or gravity, we count on God to be there. Hebrews says faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. We trust God even though we can't see God. We trust that we will live forever with God, which we hope for even though we can't see it right now. We believe God is real and active in our lives. Even though we can't see God face to face, we see evidence of God's work in our lives and in our world. So I invite you to share that evidence that you have seen of God's activity in your lives. Share that with your family today, maybe while you're eating lunch. And if you have a chance, take some time to 
read more of chapter 11 of Hebrews, there are great people of faith in here, and these stories help us keep faith when times get hard. To conclude our children's moment this morning, I want to share with you a person of faith pledge. So instead of closing with the prayer, we're going to close with a pledge, which is kind of like an affirmation. So if you will repeat after me, I am a person of faith and I can make a difference. God put faith in my heart to love what I have not seen. God put faith in my feet to go where I have never been. God put faith in my hands to help people I have never met. I may be one person, but I am a person of faith. I can make a difference. I will make a difference today. God's peace be with you, friends. Thank you, and we continue with worship with Pastor Jeff. Thank you, Sabrina. I really appreciate your message this morning, and it's one rooted in faith and our understanding of what faith is. And I say understanding knowing that um, it is frankly hard to understand. It is a bit of mystery and that's okay. So as we enter into this time of um, response to the word, will you be in prayer with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be a faithful response to the spirit moving among us in this day, in this moment. Amen. Well, we are at the end of our second week of the full-on school from home, and I have two children at home, both in elementary school, a fifth and third grader, and my wife and I have been uh, working hard to ensure that they get all the material that they need, that we're following lesson plans, and at times we offer our services uh, to them, and this week I got to help with a couple of math problems. And I got to tell you something, trying to teach math to an elementary aged student is very, very hard. And it's not hard because of the student, it's not hard because of the material, it's hard because of me, <laughs> the parent, trying to remember all the old rules from the good old days. Granted, I did have a calculator and so I was able to uh, solve the problem and then invite my um, child to do it as well. Okay, you can do this, you can do this. But one of the things with this particular problem I was working with was I was showing how to do it manually, you know, without the calculator. And gosh darn it, if every time I would do it, I was sure I was following the steps, it would not come up with the same answer that the calculator would. And so I'd have to go through and, and my child who, um, again, would remind me that, wait a minute, I think you're doing it wrong. And I'd be like, no, I'm doing it correctly. Um, and, you know, there was a persistence to the fact that I wasn't doing it correctly because I kept coming up with the wrong answer. And finally, I just kind of threw up my hands and on the final try, I was able to get the right answer and to move the decimal places to the right spot and to have a happy ending, thank goodness for all of that. But in the midst of that, you know, I really began thinking about this, like, gosh, am what I'm doing for my child here good enough? Am I being a good enough parent 
by um, trying to work but continually coming up with the wrong answer? Am I being a good enough tutor in our work together? You know, math is not my strong suit. There are other topics that I'm always more than happy to work with with my children. But, you know, the, the doubt kind of creeps in and you wonder, it's like, oh my gosh, is the remainder of the semester just going to be me teaching the absolute wrong things to my children? Thank goodness for all the work that our educators are doing. Thank goodness for uh, other parents in the household that are able to offer corrective. But I think it points to kind of some of the themes and ideas and feelings that have been emerging during this time. Um, spent at home. Is what we are doing good enough? I have a bit of an interior monologue running through my mind that everything that I do is like, okay, is this good enough right now in this moment? Am I being good enough as a parent, uh, as a partner in life? Um, am I being good enough with my work with the church? Am I being good enough friend to those who need uh, friendship and companionship? Am I being a good enough um, citizen in the community, ensuring that people get the resources that they need within the community? Am what I'm doing good enough, even though I am, you know, have those moments of, of struggle, of life together, where we all get a little irritated with each other, and we don't even necessarily know why? You know, um, I walk into the room and I, I get the glances of why are you in this room right now? You need to be back over there and things like that. I mean, I get it, but it still raises the question is what are we doing good enough? And I think that for a lot of us, we think about that in our faith lives. Is our journey right now by sheltering in place good enough for the road ahead? Are we demonstrating the fullness of Christ's love even as we remain separated from one another? Is our faith good enough and strong enough to help us endure this journey that we've been forced to walk down? And I think um, our scripture today really illuminates that model and that idea. Because today, we are on the other side of resurrection. A resurrection that we understood happened 2,000 years ago, halfway around the world. In this moment, how is our faith holding up as we work through so many competing worldviews telling us what we should and shouldn't do, what we should and shouldn't believe? Our faith is being challenged, I think, by the necessities that the world is giving us. And so how do we know if what we're doing, if we can't see faith, if we can't touch faith, if we have to have the conviction of things not seen, where does the assurance come from that our faith is what we need to be doing? We have these words from the book of Hebrews. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It is a reflection of what comes after resurrection. You know, the story just doesn't end with the empty tomb. It continues along. There will be appearances. In fact, we'll talk about one appearance next week with uh, a person who learned a lot about faith, uh, Thomas, whom we know as Doubting Thomas. But on this other side of resurrection, with these words from Hebrews, we have a dive into the meaning of what Christ has done and is continuing to do in our lives. And it looks forward to a future where God's love is reigning supreme. And I do believe that faith is a mystery in fully comprehending and embracing faith as something that is not measured, but rather woven into the fabric of our daily living. Sometimes it's a faith that goes unnoticed, yet is always present as we go about our daily tasks. There are ups and downs and moments where we feel a lack of faith in ourselves and the world around us. Or perhaps we feel strongly convicted in our faith, but wonder if anybody is listening. What are we to do? And like that 
parent who is struggling to figure out math problems and where to put decimal points and why isn't our math matching up with the calculator, we too have to step out and respond to the needs of the world with ourselves fully, knowing that, you know what, we are humans. And in our humanness, we may not always live up to the expectations we sometimes overburden ourselves with. Our minds want to be in control of the world around us, but so often that control may seem just an illusion. And so we do the best we can to control what we can in the hopes that what we are doing is good enough for ourselves and the people closest to us. But now we are really forced to do that. And sometimes it's not our strengths that get revealed, but rather our vulnerabilities. And our vulnerabilities is all that seems to be what is pouring out from us. But I would say that there is hope in the midst of that. There is hope in knowing that Christ made Christ's self fully vulnerable for the world. And in that vulnerability, and in that weakness of the cross, in that stumbling block for so many people, is where Christ found strength. Because of what Christ did, it is oftentimes our vulnerabilities that is what will be our sustaining grace as we move forward in our faith. Our community right now is separated from one another. We are isolated, but there are many wonderful and beautiful things happening. I recognize that for something as simple as gathering around a meal every day has been a blessing. For others, it has been doing the works of hands that has demonstrated a faithfulness to ensuring that people get masks. Others, it's simply being um, a presence on Facebook or with your phones or with your office colleagues whom you haven't seen, but only through Zoom. We are still shaped by our faith to be engaged in community. And I would say that though we may feel like we're stumbling, that community orientation still demonstrates that what we are doing truly is good enough as long as we keep Christ at the center. The author Frederick Beekner once said, Here's the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. Our faith, though we sometimes feel like it is lacking or insufficient, really is something that is helping us move forward through grace. Down the road, I'll talk about the faith of a mustard seed. And if you see that mustard seed, it is so tiny. You sneeze and it is gone. But faith, even the tiniest kernel, is one that can continue to grow as long as we are reminded of the resurrection story, that Christ is alive in our hearts, and we as a community can be sustained in knowing that what we are doing is what we need to do in this moment. We have no control over the pandemic, but I do believe we have control and over how we respond to it. In faith, we recognize that there are things in our life that are unknowable, but with Christ in our hearts, as evidenced by the resurrection we have never seen, we know that God's love remains, and God's love endures and renews, even under the harshest of circumstances. I would be anxious to hear of your stories of how you've experienced renewal in these moments. Where have you seen hope, even in the midst of... Um, kind of what is going on in the world around us? How has Christ met you and allowed your faith to flourish? Even in the quiet moments where we maybe aren't doing a darn thing, we can take comfort in knowing that sometimes it is in the moments of doing nothing with where we are at that that is actually good enough for our faith to grow. As we go from this space, as we go from this place, as we continue this journey of Easter together, I just wanted to offer a brief message and letting you know that I know that the struggle is definitely real, but your faith is good enough. Your humanity is 
good enough. Christ is caring for us all the way to the world so that we can move forward through grace. But that you are good enough in faith to share in that love of Christ. And we are sharing in that love together. And we will continue journeying and exploring these issues of good enough faith, knowing that we are flawed, we are imperfect, but we are loved by the faith of Christ, a faith that is overwhelming, a faith that will continue to grow in each and every one of us as we walk down the path of our good enough faith together. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, sometimes we wonder if our faith is good enough. Sometimes we wonder if what we are doing truly is impactful for ourselves and for others around us. Please give us the assurance that your love continues to remain, that your love continues to shape us, and that through the faith of Christ, we as a community will continue to flourish together. Amen. As we head into this time of offering, again, I want to offer a word of thanks to everyone who have been giving themselves to doing the work of the church, the work of the community. Perhaps it is something as simple as picking up an item at the store for someone. I know Judy Macy has been doing a lot of work with making masks. And um, every other day we get to read on Facebook of all of you who've been contributing to those masks and where they've been delivered to. I know it's been a blessing to see um, those persons who have been able to simply be present in prayer and to offer prayers of joy and prayers of concern on behalf of the community. Sometimes we desperately want to be out there doing something that we forget that sometimes what we need to be doing is simply giving ourselves fully over to God as an offering and that God will open up those new pathway, new pathways for us to showing how we can truly be the church and mission and ministry to the world. I'm also grateful for um, your offering for those who can give of their, your resources. Again, we have a couple of ways in which to give monetarily. One is through check, simply um, send to PO Box 400, DeSoto, Kansas 66018. DeSoto United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 400 66018. You can go to our website at desotoumc.org and give on our giving tab electronically. And we also have an option for text to give. That number is 844 931 2855. If you have a cell phone and the capability to uh, text message, you would simply um, Text the number 844-931-2855, and in the body of text, put a number, uh, 5, 10, um, that is simply a dollar amount, and your prompts will uh, lead you to be able to set up a, a way to give electronically as, as, as that as well. Again, we are grateful for all who can give of themselves, whether it's of your time, of your prayer, whether it's the giving of resources, we are certainly appreciative and we consider it a blessing. Um, all of you are a blessing for the life of the church. And thank you, thank you for your offering. As we go from this place this morning, as you turn off the computer, as you go, perhaps it's out into the yard, out for a walk, gather around the dinner table with your family, know that you are loved. Know that you are seen. In the weeks ahead, we will continue to be making contacts with many of you just to simply offer a prayer, check in to see how you are doing, and to let you know that your faith is good enough together in community as we continue to live into the promise of the resurrection. Go now in peace. Thank you so much. Go now in peace. <laughs>